This is Nature's CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. I'm Dr. Tom Stolgren. Today's episode, Are Humans a Creepy Invasive Species? So, in the last episode I showed this picture of a lot of invasive species, Asian carp and pythons and brown tree snakes, zebra mussels, invasive mosquitoes from other countries, and the Africanized honeybee. And people ask me, are humans a creepy invasive species? Well, humans greatly facilitated the spread of these invasive species, but that's a really good question. Are humans a creepy invasive species? Let's find out. An invasive species is a species non-native to an ecosystem under consideration and whose introduction causes or is likely to cause economic environmental harm or harm to human health. Do we cause, do human invaders affect the economy? Ooh, I'd have to say yes. They cost the country about $120 billion a year. We have to protect our crops and our livestock. We have to protect our homes from rats and invasive termites. We have a lot of work to do and that costs $120 billion a year. And to put this in perspective, that's more than earthquakes, fires, hurricanes or tornadoes all combined, and these species are reproducing. Does it happen elsewhere? Yes, around the globe, it costs almost $1.3 trillion a year in costs associated with invasive species. Do humans affect uh, human health? Well, think about when the pilgrims first arrived here. It wasn't by invitation. And what did they bring? Well, we brought to the Native Americans European diseases, smallpox, measles, tuberculosis, scarlet fever, the flu. We may have wiped out as many as 10 or 20 million Native Americans with our European diseases. And of course, we have the leper colony example in Hawaii. Same thing, another disease brought to an island and the Native Americans there, uh, Polynesians, couldn't prevent it had no immunity to the disease. In this country, we also have plague and now West Nile virus that comes in and affects not only our ourselves, but our horses and birds. And with mosquitoes carrying this all around, it may be here to stay. And we have invasive mosquitoes that bring us cholera and dengue fever now. Oh my gosh, what's the future hold? Who knows? Will we bring in more SARS, Asian bird flu, Ebola? Inquiring minds want to know, do humans cause environmental harm? Well, that's a pretty easy question to answer. If we think back about the Polynesian expansion, here we have some great seafaring people who found, uh, came to islands and fairly soon, some of the large flightless birds just disappeared, went extinct. About a thousand bird species went extinct in 1300 years. Ah, tastes like chicken. It, it did. Anyway, in, um, in New Zealand, where we've just been there for about a thousand years, same thing sort of happened. Uh, the flightless birds went first and then some larger, slower birds went second. But at the same time, forests started to disappear on the island after humans got there. And they disappear. A third of them were lost before the Europeans arrived. Once the Europeans arrived, another third of the forests were gone. So we have an effect on habitat and the species that are on islands. That's just in a thousand years. Let's talk about, are humans native species in all ecosystems? Well, we just found out that the Polynesians went to islands that were uninhabited, but for the most part, in the age of exploration, Columbus and all the other explorers, they found humans wherever they went, and they brought them presence as well. We brought, we can look at the Chinese animal zodiac to see a list of the species we probably brought around on every ship. Uh, rats, oxen, cats, hares or, or rabbits, snakes sometimes, horses, goats, chickens, dogs, pigs. We brought all of these species to each of the places we went so that we would have food when we came back. Well, what happened? Over time, those invasive species populated the islands and native mammals and birds went into extinction. We lost a lot of species by 1900. It's the level of the rate of extinction has gone down since then, but we're still losing 
creatures on islands. And let's think about human diseases now. The uh, the dragon and the and the monkey. The monkey's just another primate. If we think of the dragon as diseases and the monkey as us, we brought ourselves those other human diseases that we've spread around the country. And we've started an era then, at the age of exploration, as an era of accelerated environmental harm and harm to human health. Well, let's look back in, at those extinctions and see what's happened on islands versus continents. On continents, we've had far fewer extinctions than on islands. No question about it. And those are mostly caused by hunting by humans. The passenger pigeon is a great example. On islands, about 95% of the invasive species, 95% of the extinctions were lost due to the species that humans brought to the island and by humans. That's a major effect. Another study showed that if you just look at bird extinctions since 1500, they've almost all been directly or indirectly caused by humans. No species, just one subspecies, has been driven extinction by natural catastrophes. That's something. If you look at land conversion, how much humans have converted land around the globe, we've had a major effect in Mediterranean forests, in tropical forests and steppe, and then, of course in tropical rainforests. And we've converted an awful lot of that land, which is habitat for many native species. Now if we stop looking at extinction and just look at extirpation, how we push species aside, we can look at some other examples right here in North America. Wolves, for example, had a much bigger historic range than they have now. We've pushed them out. The same thing with grizzly bears. We've pushed them north. Only a few areas in the lower 48 states now support grizzly bears. And the same thing is true of American bison. We've dropped their numbers drastically to tiny little populations when there were 30 million of them at one time. I could have gone on with many other examples of bighorn sheep and beaver and many other creatures, but this is the story. We're losing species locally. And if we looked at virgin old growth forest in the United States, the same thing would ring true. From 1620 to 1850 to 1920, we lost a lot of our old growth forests. Now, in one paper, we modeled a human invader. And this was funny because this paper was ab absolutely rejected by journals, uh, four journals before it was finally accepted. It was because I compared us to plague and fire ants in the abstract. But if we looked at satellite imagery from 1992 to 2001, we found that we increased the human footprint in the United States 7.5%. That's an area the size of Massachusetts in that nine year period. And it turns out we were very predictable. We liked a large number of growing degree days, happy warm weather, low elevations, high humidity, and gentle slopes. And if we had those conditions, we built. And when we built, we took half the land from agriculture and half the land from forests. We brought in usually landscaping that included weeds that could be windblown into other areas. And we brought cats and dogs. But cats alone, by a new article in Science News, reports that we've cats kill greater than one billion birds per year in the United States. That's a lot of birds we're losing to our pets. So are humans creepy invasive species? Well, are we non-native to the ecosystem? On some islands, yes, but in most cases, no. Uh, we were there. Do we cause economic harm? Yes, we do, but we have a lot of economic benefits, too. Uh, gross national product, the homes, our businesses, our farms, our schools, and so on. Do we cause environmental harm? In many cases, yes, we do, but we have the power to prevent extinctions and restore habitats and species. Do we cause harm to human health? Yes, we do in some cases, and we have greatly in the past. But we have the power now to contain diseases and restore health. So are we, are humans, a creepy invasive species? Well, technically no, because we're really native to a lot of ecosystems. But we share many characteristics of invasive species. So what if we think about becoming smarter and more benevolent invaders? If we looked at the uh, 
footprint map, the human footprint map of the Western United States, we see that we've had a major effect almost everywhere. We have a few areas in white which have a low human footprint, mostly in the high country, high mountains. And in low valleys, we've pretty much covered them with either agriculture or homes. And everything in between, we've sort of grazed or uh, farmed in little tiny spots or moved houses into mountainous areas. We have a big human footprint. So how can we come, become smarter and more benevolent invaders? One way would be to establish more parks, refuges, and conservation areas in lands and waters. Another might be to reduce the spread of harmful invasive species, maybe including humans. Let's give the other animals a place to live. And how about restoring native habitats and species? That's a good goal for us. And we should reduce our demand for energy and natural resources, especially outside the areas that we have to live. Let's develop less harmful hobbies and habits. And let's raise awareness wherever we go. Let's ask ourselves to preserve a better quality of life for future generations and our fellow species. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Nature's CSI, Creepy Stories of Invasion. Uh, tune in for the next episode when we talk about the island of Guam. If you have another idea for a show, please send it to me uh, by my email and check out our websites for additional information. Thanks for joining us. Bye.